The next step in our series of videos is to take things to the next level and uh, investigate this Tools section of the Model tab. <clears throat> in this section you'll see that there's a, um, a bunch of different things that you can do and these are all things that you can do to objects that you create in Roblox Studio. So the first thing that we're going to do in Roblox Studio in this demonstration is we're going to create an object. So in the last video we created a uh, spawn point here, or spawn location. Now we're going to add to that, and to do that we're in the in the models tab. We're going to under parts select um, the down arrow here for parts, and you can see that there's actually a couple of or a few different selections here. So for the sake of uh, simplicity, we're going to use block, and you see when I click that block comes up, and the other thing you should notice is that the part that you select, once you select it, will be put exactly in the center of the screen, wherever the screen is uh, focused at that point in time. So in this particular uh, screen, you'll see it went right to the center. Had I had the spawn point in the center, it would have been over the spawn point. So it's really whatever is there is there, and it just drops it right in the center of the screen. <clears throat> so if I select this, which I know it's selected because if I, if I scroll, whoops, if I scroll in a little bit and I move things around, um, you can see that it is highlighted in blue. That's how I know that it's selected. Um, there is a slight bug in uh, Roblox Studio where there are going to be times where you cannot select it when you left click. If that is the case, just go to your workspace and select it there. As you can see, I can select Spawn Point, and you can see that, that this is no longer outlined in blue. Now the Spawn Point is. Um, likewise, if I click Part, I can um, have that selected as well. So when in doubt, go over to Workspace and select it there, which is actually uh, leads me to another good point, which is that uh, renaming your objects to be things that make a little bit more sense other than part um, is a really good idea because in cases where you can't select using your mouse um, it's good to be able to quickly identify where it is in your workspace list and be able to select it from there which you wouldn't be able to do if every part was called part. So here we have selected it so now let's take a look at some of the tools that are up here to, uh, that we can use. The first one is move. So if I select it, you'll see uh, some lines that get created. And I'll try to try to zoom in a little bit, although it's going to be difficult. Uh, it's not going to really let me. So um, we're just going to kind of have to go with what we see here. So you can see that there's three different colors. There's a green color a blue color, which is running this way, and a red color, which is running this way. Um, red is basically your x-axis, blue is your y-axis, or vice versa, and then green is considered your z-axis. axis. So, um, so if you think of it that way, it's sort of three dimensions. So uh, if I click on the arrow itself, you can see in drag, while it's still clicked, I can move my object up and down on the Z axis. If I click on the red arrow, I can move it back and forth on the on the X or Y where Y axis, depending on how you define it. And likewise on the blue, if I select it, I can move it along this axis. Now what I can't do is you can see the hand here moving in the opposite direction or perpendicular to the line, it's not going to let me move in any other direction other than the axis that I have selected. So that's a good thing. Um, it kind of helps keep control over the movement of the object. The other thing to note is that it's kind of choppy. You can notice when I move it, it moves in like increments of sorts. That's because up here in our snap to grid we have move set to one stud. And if you think of Lego bricks, a stud is kind of like one of those circles on a Lego brick. Um, you can actually change that and we can make it really a really big number and you'll see that the movement is even more 
spread out. If I uncheck the move box, I have flow, a nice free flowing movement here, which is good in some cases, but bad in others. When you're building a building, you may not actually want that fr that freedom because you want to lock the um, lock the pieces together in such a way that they they connect precisely at a 90 degree angle. So this is good in some cases and not others. The next feature here is scale. If I select scale, you'll see the lines actually turn into bubbles. Uh, and again, the colors are still there. So we have green here, we have blue, and we have red. These colors um, uh, represent the different, uh, the different uh, um, planes that you're operating on. So red and blue are the X and Y, and green is your Z axis. So if I click on one of these bubbles and I drag while it's still clicked, you can see I can change the shape of the object that I'm working with. Likewise, if I do the blue, I change it in the blue direction. And if I do the green, I can change it in the green direction. So you can see how obstacles can be made using this feature. The third thing we're going to talk about today is the rotate. Rotate, again, we see the green, the blue, and the red. And rotate simply means that you can rotate on all of these different axes. axes. Um, so for the green, we can rotate this way on this axis. And I'll just undo the move here again. And I'll undo the rotate as well because the rotate is similar to the move um, but it works on the rotate function. Um, so here is the blue axis and the red axis. So you can see that we can actually create some interesting effects just by rotating our object. And we can see that the object is no longer in the same rotation or uh, scale as the original object or even the spawn point that we started with even before that. So those are really the three main uh, functions that uh, you'll be using quite a bit in tools. We'll get into the other ones later, but um, these are the ones that you'll be using most in the, uh, in the starting, starting point of your development, game development.